<laughs> Hello to our friends out there on Facebook Live. Thanks for joining our Sunday Supper Podcast video stream. And if you have any questions, declarations, or shout outs, please leave them in the comments and we'll get to them at the end of the show. And welcome to Sunday Supper. Woo, I know, so exciting. Kate's back. I'm Hello. Mike Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kate. I'm Ashley Twiskel. And you are joining us today for one of the greatest things of all time or a discussion of it, sweet tea. This is the sweet tea episode. And today we're talking about this classic sugary nectar of the gods. That's a pretty good discussion. It sounds really yeah. good, yeah. <laughs> sounds like it. Um, we're going over everything about how we make it in the South uh, and ways that you can use it in both food and cocktails. So um, are you excited, Kate? You're back from vacation. I am back from vacation. I am kind of excited. I'm excited for the cocktail. Yep. I'm not really a sweet tea person. I gotta admit, I'm an unsweet tea person, which is probably the wrong thing to say on Facebook Live right now. Mm, uh, but this yeah. isn't yeah, this isn't expected. So we'll see how this works out. Tea has started. Uh, yeah. What about you, Ashley? I think you might not be a sweet tea person either. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm not, but I am open to everything. Historically, I don't drink sweet tea. Um, I prefer to save my calories for boozy drinks. But you have one of those here for us, so. This is your opportunity to um, change my life. Well, <laughs> if anyone's a sweet tea person, you can look uh, at the sweet tea shirt that I'm wearing right now with the Kool-Aid man on him, but he is uh, beige and he's saying sweet tea. Instead so, of oh yeah. Oh yeah, you know, you know, you know these things, sweet see? That's tea. right, so it's important to me at least, and I'm gonna lead us through a lot of this stuff, so I, I get to have some I told some you fun. you could change my life today. Are you, are you I'm gonna nervous? Try. Are you excited? I'm gonna try, I'm either gonna okay. fail or everyone's gonna say how good of a job. All right. Now, if you're like us, you might spill a little bit of your sweet tea when you're making it and stirring it up. So you can make cleanup easy with a fashionable Kohler's Gentleman's Bar Sink Faucet made by Kohler Signature Stores by PDI. It is available in the Artifacts Collection and features a vintage artisan-inspired top mount handle, a temperature memory system, ceramic disc valves that exceed longevity standards, plus much more, and it looks so darling and cute. I'm just so impressed at how seamlessly you say that. Do you, do you say that you, in I your sleep? I felt you look over at me like, <laughs> wow, he's doing a good job. Okay, thank you. about cooler sinks. So I just, I mean, it's a, it's a lovely sink. It I mean, really if you're going to have one. They're beautiful. When you see it, you'll get what I'm saying. I mean, really, I'm not just here just to tell you guys something that's not true. But let's Let's get to this sweet tea history. Uh, Ashley, are you leading us off? Yes, you guys know how much I love a brief history of I things. Do. And did you know? Did you know? <laughs> and, you know, of course, like anything else that we've talked about in our history, uh, the South is very um, mysterious it when is. it comes to the history of things and the food history. There's a lot of common themes that tend to be woven throughout, um, typically around necessity and um, being agrarian and um, you know not having a ton of money. But sweet tea is actually a really interesting story because while it's a little bit unclear, uh, the general consensus is that tea, tea punch, right. So it was made uh, with green leaves and uh, this particular recipe published in the Kentucky Housewife calls for combining very strong tea with loads of sugar and sweet cream, and then stir in gradually a bottle of wine or champagne. So boozy, boozy drink. Um, and it should be served either hot or entirely cold. Mm. So it cannot be room temperature. It needs to be very, very cold. Uh, but then, of course, you know, prohibition came along uh, in America. I hate prohibition. I yeah. know. So uh, sweet tea lost the alcoholic portion, but it was still served as a cold sweet tea. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we came out of prohibition, I think people just really liked the flavor. And in the South, it's hot. Yes. So yes. an entirely cold beverage is good almost year round. Uh, and so that's how we kind of came to continue to drink sweet tea non-alcoholic, but now of course we're coming back around mm -hmm. and realizing that, hey, sweet tea is actually really good with alcohol, which yes. you'll get to a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, tea is something that has been drank for years and years and years. We started a war over it here in America. I know, it's a big <laughs> deal, apparently. <laughs> um, so all the different ways to serve tea um, have been around for a really long time, and this particular version is uh, something that the South is known for. In fact, Kate, do you get weird looks when you ask for unsweet tea? I do. I do. And when I lived in California, though, you had to ask specifically for sweet tea if you wanted. If you just asked mm. for iced tea, you'd automatically just get yeah, unsweet, unsweet tea. Or it would be like not a black tea. It would just be some kind of fruity right. tazan. 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 Yes. There's this, there's this exchange that happens in restaurants mm -hmm. in the South, right? Mm -hmm. So 
you, or even if you're out of the South and you're a Southerner, where you say, I'd like a sweet tea. And they yes. say, we have unsweet tea and we can bring you sugar packets. And you say, never mind, I'll have a Coke. Yeah. Like that's, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not the same. Nothing's no. going to happen except that you're going to have dust at the bottom of your the glass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. that's always. you got to constantly <laughs> stir and drink at the well, same time. Well, if you're at like a fancy coffee shop, they probably have syrup. They do. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can add a little dribble. Kate's what been I out always, of the South, so she's figured out all the I know, the she's been on the, on the West Coast. Uh, <laughs> but no, I always like also, it's not tea, but you know when folks would say would make lemonade at the table, and it's just like, come on now, that little slice of lemon they put on your cup is not going to be enough <laughs> to flavor this thing and that sugar at the bottom. Yeah. But you can make a very horrible Arnold, Arnold Palmer if you go that route, but just spend the money. Um, my buddy, our friend, friend of Sunday mm -hmm. Supper, uh, soul food scholar Adrian Miller, he wrote about, uh, he did a really good piece on this in about 2016, and he was talking about uh, the fact of how McDonald's started doing it as a national trend in 2006, and then making sweet tea spread around to Chick-fil-A, of course, as we know. There's a lot of debate about who has the better yeah. fast food sweet mm -hmm. tea. McDonald's started right. nationally with sweet tea. I always, I just assumed it was like southern like they've got their you know their fried chicken and mm -hmm. their buttermilk biscuits and things mm -hmm. like that i assumed it was it. they had it on the west coast when i was oh, really? in college yeah okay. yeah cool. they said but it says where no national food fast food chain based outside the south had dared to tread oh, so maybe yeah. we saw some that were doing it here because yeah. we were more used to sweet teas right, right. but mcdonald's decided to take it outside chick place had it forever and yeah. the big right. styrofoam cups yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, the big jugs the big bring jug. to a party. Yeah. Do they put on the side of the big cup the nutritional facts to let you no. know like how Heck deep into no. you're no. <laughs> But no. One sweet tea is yeah. your entire days of calories. <laughs> but he had some things here that I even like, you know, some fondness of, like Jim and Nick's Community Barbecue in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm from Alabama, so I remember Jim and Nick's had I sweet like tea. Jim and Nick's. They That's have good, good sweet yeah. tea. McAllister's Deli, Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah. I didn't know that McAllister's was in Oxford, but mm. it's just a sandwich place, and I guess they're there. But I know they had sweet tea but um michael twitty uh of the cooking gene fame another uh well-known uh cook slash author he said that tea flavor should be strong and tea's color should be reddish brown glow and any sweet tea with a darker color might as well be coffee and any tea with a lighter color is probably just sugar water is he right or is he wrong? There, I, you know, I don't drink sweet tea, but my husband enjoys sweet tea and lots of my friends do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there is definitely a look. You, I think you can judge right away. This is good. This is not going to be great. Or yeah, these people have no idea what they're doing. They've burned the it's tea. It's too cloudy. Mm -hmm. You're going to know it's going to taste weird. Or you can, you can also tell if it's been sitting in the fridge for like weeks at the restaurant and no one's ordering it and then it tastes like skunky and yeah ugh. old tea did you know that you're supposed to put baking soda in your tea when you're making it i did because i actually read that on southern kitchen i think <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of good sweet tea content on southern kitchen yeah. i would have to say what you just read was how the south became synonymous with sweet tea yep. we have some stories that have just recently posted yep. so yeah this is a hot topic i mean it's really cold because tea is a <laughs> entirely cold, cold. cold. It's entirely cold, cold. <laughs> yes uh, Louisiana tea only is yes. that yeah? Can you do? Uh, Ashley yeah, doesn't know. <laughs> well, so so growing up, we we didn't drink sweet tea in my house. We drank a lot of unsweet tea. My mom in the summertime would make sun tea in the backyard and like drink it constantly all what day long. What is sun tea for people who? Might so not sun know. tea, you just take a pitcher, fill it with water, and stick some tea bags in it, and then just stick it outside, and it magically brews itself it? okay. from the sun. From the sun. I assumed it was it's a, like, a brand. Uh, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I know. It's like marginally unsafe. Okay. <laughs> like kombucha Just kind of? Well, no, like, you know, I think, I think there's bacteria issues that could potentially happen, but I've never had a problem with it. And it's a little bit more... Um, Soft taste, like you don't have as much of a have as much of a tannic flavor as you oh, would when you pour steep. boiling water on, yeah. on tea. Okay. Um, but it's also just n you don't have to think about it. You just kind of sit it out there and grab the tea when you're ready. Okay. But we always had Louisiana. Yeah, we did Lipton, but you could taste Lipton. Always tasted a little bit more like uh, yeah. to the chest, like you knew you were getting that caffeine punch. Mm -hmm. So I was always thinking Louisiana. So yeah, well. Um, that's that's what I think. I mean, I think Louisiana is supposed to be the one. I'm a fan of uh, Jim and Nick's being from Alabama. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we also have some Milo's tea here, which is yeah. uh, another thing. I have never, obviously, I'm not an, a sweet tea aficionado, but I'm learning. I'm open to learning. Tell me about, my, what is the deal with Milo's? <laughs> All right, because so. Because this, I mean, it, 
I don't know about it doesn't the packaging. Scream. <laughs> you need this me. packaging. Okay, look, Milo's, if you've never seen Milo's, it is in a basic plastic container. The gallon, you can see it from anywhere just because they did not spend the budget on <laughs> font treatments for Milo's. It's very, very simple. But it's famous sweet tea, all natural. Um, the story is right there. It was founded in 1946 by Milo and Bia Carlton. You know you're Southern when your name is Bia. <laughs> so, uh, and they basically, it's Alabamian uh, from Bessemer, which is right outside of Birmingham. I used mm -hmm. to live out there, and uh, it is sweet. So that's the best thing to say. It's sweet tea, but the first thing you need to see before famous should be sweet famous tea because <laughs> Milo's does not play around with it. We're going to get a little bit of this, so don't worry. It looks don't like it worry. does have cane sugar in it, though, and not corn syrup. So it does. Does it that does. make it healthy? Uh, I would question whether or not we can call it healthy for legal reasons, <laughs> but uh, it is delicious, and things that are delicious tend to make you live longer. The other I think. thing I'm noticing is that this container, it looks like about a pint sized container has two and a half servings in it. <laughs> yeah, that's always, you never yeah. quite look at that. You look at the sugar and it looks like we were working with 18 grams, but Test again, three. that's almost Test three, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, you can do the math. Uh, we won't do it live, but yes, yeah, a lot. But what I also love about sweet tea in the South is I think people just ignore the fact that it's caloric, right? Yes. Like, it is one of those things that you will get refilled mm -hmm. at a restaurant a hundred times and people down it. You know, they'll have like a salad and a sweet tea because that's mm -hmm. just nature. It's just like, you, it's just something that you do. It's habitual and... It goes with everything, kind yeah. of. It's kind of yeah. like one of those things to where even with the addition of sugar, it kind of goes with most of the staple dishes that we call Southern. So I'm kind of like, you know, it, it works with the salad. It works with corn. It works with, you know, cornbread. It works with a lot of things. So yeah. I think we should be loyal to it. But um, <laughs> by the way, are you all signed up to our email list? Because you can sign up to our email list and you can get delicious tried and true recipes sent directly to your inbox. So also as many special offers and products in our shop. And if you are not signed up, you need to hit pause right now on whatever you can pause and then head over to southernkitchen.com and sign up and then uh, we can come right back and yeah. do some more sweet tea talk. I like that you said... Um directly to your inbox like you're the one hand delivering it don't stall <laughs> don't don't go in a zigzag pattern here like get directly there all right now while you all are signing up at southernkitchen.com i am actually going to get us started with the cocktail side of this Ooh. thing i'm excited about this uh, one of the things in our history was that dolly parton and yes. steel magnolia is called sweet tea uh the house wine of the south yes and so we're gonna have our house wine of the south with a little added uh we're going to do Bourbon this thing. Bourbon of the South. Yep. We're going to do this thing. So Which we, is also a wine of the South. I think you could probably say that. You could call Bourbon. bourbon it's, basically. Mm -hmm. it's not, we're not low on sugar here by any <laughs> means. So we are using Fiddler Bourbon, which is from here in Atlanta, from uh, ASW. And so what we're doing is we're going to take this and make a bourbon sweet tea. And if you can hear that, this is ice coming from our pitcher into a little cup. You can use your hands. We're all friends here. Yeah, if you want. I should. Do you want right. to do the other ones? Well, you, you want to do them? Do the next yeah. Thank you very much. All righty. Mm -hmm. Lovely so, assistant. Kate. A wonderful <laughs> assistant, Kate. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take bourbon, we're going to take lemon, and we're going to take simple syrup. Do you want to use this a honey simple syrup? We're going to use the honey simple syrup, which you can also get. Uh, we sell this, Hudson and Lee's honey simple syrup, classic mixture. So basically just the honey simple syrup. Honey and lemon always go well together. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take our bourbon. Are you measuring or are you just going free form? We're going free form today. Free form. We're going right. free form. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's sweet tea. And here's the other thing about when you mix bourbon with drinks. It actually covers up pretty well if you don't do a straight half and half, like, suicide mission with this kind of stuff. <laughs> so you're doing about, I would say, like a quarter yep. glass, right? And then yeah. you're going to fill the rest with the sweet tea. Ice. That is correct. Okay. We are going to fill the rest with some sweet tea, and we're going to put some lemon. And more, and more sugar. Yes, we're definitely going to put more <laughs> sugar. So let's do some simple syrup. Simple syrup. We're going free form with that too. We're going I'm very free impressed. form. Yeah. And going. Oh, we have table. to. <laughs> have to go on the table. Have to. And We're you're gonna just squeeze in some lemon. Hand squeezing in some lemon. Yep. 
What it would be like to have your life narrated like this by me all day? It would think? be good because, you know what, I could realize when I'm probably way off point and say, you know what, it is time to get my life back in I order. I could be like, Mike is running late for a deadline, absolutely. but he's focusing on something else at the moment oh, I when just got, his editor wishes that he would. I just got a very nasty sticky note on my uh, laptop, and so... It was friendly. It I was o- friendly. I just only had red pen. It was in red, but there was two underlines, so let's not pretend like there, you couldn't just just stopped at one, but that's okay. <laughs> my uh, my English teacher in high school was traumatized by red pens, and mm-hmm. so she would only edit our papers with green pen. Yeah. And uh. ever since then, I was like, should I really be using red? I think about it <laughs> it's before hers. I do it. I know. It really is serious. All right. So what we have here, Milo Sweet Tea. And just because we are absolute lunatics, we added a little bit more sugar. sugar. I was going to yep. ask you about that. So talking about the sweetness of that tea, is there... I assume that you've tested this out in some capacity. The thing is, is that when you're just straight up mixing sweet tea and bourbon, it's going to kind of come across with a little bit of a kick. So you still need something, and plus we're adding in some lemon juice. So that's going to like tang it up. And what we don't want is for us to taste like, oh wow, someone just mixed bourbon with sweet tea, and now I'm tasting like I could have just gone to McDonald's and snuck in my flask. (laughs) So we want you guys to feel like like, absolutely. All right, now we have stirred up these glasses and we need to make them cutesy. I'm gonna take the one that still has the uh, sticker on the lemon, so <laughs> don't worry about that, ladies. So and if you can't see, we're adding some beautiful lemon wheels beautiful to the lemon sides wheels of these glasses. Beautiful wheels, using our Kang Shan knife and also our Craft House by Fortessa set. Again, things that you can pick up at southernkitchen.com in the Thank shop. Thank you. You're welcome, Thank ladies. You. Now toast to experimental bourbon sweet tea cheers. cocktails. All right, cheers. And let's see what we have. I like it. It is good. It is good. It's It's not overwhelmingly sweet. No. Yeah. And that's the key is that without that little bit, and the honey actually comes through a lot Mm -hmm, too. So mm -hmm. I feel like with a simple syrup, I have my own simple syrup that I have here, but we're going to use that for a different purpose because I think simple syrup is one of those things where folks don't think about it and you can have a lot of other infused flavors going on there. But the honey in this with the lemon, with the sugar from the sweet tea, and then Milo's has a very good flavor. Alabamians and Southerners, we all kind of swear by Milo's, but you know. I think it turned now out I pretty know. well. Mm-hmm. All right. Now I know. Yeah. All right. So, cocktails with sweet tea. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you've got a bowl of chicken, I do. raw chicken raw here, raw sitting chicken. in front of us raw today. Because it's not enough to have knives and bourbon <laughs> at our jobs. We also need to have things with bacteria, but <laughs> right. it's all right. This is, uh, we have boneless chicken, uh, boneless skinless chicken thighs, which are my personal they are, favorite. They are the best. What about I you? I totally mm-hmm. agree. Yep. If you're grilling, if you're fries, like, it, especially if you even make it a biscuit, they just oh, yep. size mm-hmm. up exactly right. They're awesome. They're so good. They're you awesome. Can't, you really can't screw up chicken thighs. No, you can't. Oh, well, my you, husband you kind did. of just did. Mm. Not, Way I like to throw him under I the bus. Know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love you, Joshua. Um, he took the, the chicken thighs that I had and... Um, he just he's like one of those people which I think a lot of people are like slightly afraid of chicken because of the opportunity to undercook right. and all of the potential risks that come with that. So I think he overcooked it a little bit. Um, but you can there's some he must have really overcooked it because with chicken thighs like you can he said take it was em. a lot worse than they were. I had them uh-huh. uh, the next day. They were fine. They tasted good to me. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. All right, Josh. I'm sorry about this again. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't really my plan to have your shortcomings broadcast for the general public, but it's okay. Men get thrown under the bus all the time. Yep. All right. Bless your heart. But yeah, bless your heart, Josh. <laughs> it was better than he thinks it was. So. It, yeah. <laughs> chicken thighs. Chicken thighs. Good. So what you can do if you've never done this, uh, and it's a big thing. I'm starting to notice. Uh, more and more. It's been a thing in restaurants and people do it at home, but I'm seeing more restaurants do a sweet tea brine on chicken. And it's one of those things when you think about it, it's like, why do I want my chicken to taste like sweet tea? But there's something about that tea leaf. And then I also heard, we're not doing this today, but I also heard that there's kind of like a way of smoking. And so it probably does pretty well on the grill once you brine it. I'm going to fry this uh, boneless, skinless chicken thighs when I get home. And I'm going to share some pictures of that on Facebook just so you guys can kind of check my skills and see if I did a good job of frying. So we'll see. You might be the next one thrown under the bus. I will probably be the (laughs) next one thrown under the bus. I am a man and I'm used to it. So really all we're going to do is we're going to take this tea that I have in this wonderful, uh, what do we call this pattern? Bossa Nova. The Bossa Nova pattern on our... 
This is another craft house item, but yes, so. I think it's Nachman. I think. Oh, Nachman. Nachman. Sorry, Nachman. Nachman. Also at the shop. So we have this here, and we're just going to pour this black tea right over our chicken. So is that sweet tea, or is that just black tea? This is just black tea. Okay. And about so how much are you pouring? I'm going to cover it up completely. Okay. And then I'm going to take my simple syrup and my salt. And now I'm going to, what I like to do is I like to get the salt all in here. He's pouring it into the tea. Yes. You can't see. Pouring it into the tea. I'm fascinated. Salt yes. tea. Now, I'm going to even that same amount out. And this is about a half of a cup. So I'm going to put some simple syrup in there. Now, simple syrup is going to be a little bit more. I make mine one to one. Yep. Mm -hmm. But pouring that in with the salt, kosher salt. And my tea was warm. Now, this is important. You need to have warm enough tea. And then we're just going to mix that up and stir it to get the salt and the simple syrup moving along together. And I'm actually going to put a little bit more lemon in this to give it some lemony citrus stuff. My wife actually doesn't like lemon flavor in chicken. Do y'all? Oh, I, oh, do. I love, I love yeah. lemon flavor. I'm, I'm never quite sure like what happened along lemon the Lemon can road. do no wrong for me. No. I don't I think, I'm never like, oh man, I wish this didn't have lemon. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can ever go wrong is if you put too much lemon zest on something, because yep. then it gets that pledgy, yep. weird yeah. flavor, but mm -hmm. lemon juice you can't screw up. This is a very interesting kind of sandy color. It is. It yeah. almost looks like, um, like, uh, like a latte. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I was like, what is it? No. It does look like a in. coffee latte. Mm -hmm. And basically, what we have here is our chicken is completely covered. Now we're not making any more cocktails, so don't worry about us using this tool. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, our chicken is completely covered. And I'm actually also going to throw in some mint because kind of to make it a little bit of a Mediterranean to give it some real like flavor from some herbs. Now always smack your mint. Otherwise, the flavor doesn't come out as intensely. But I'm just going to put these mints assorted places around here. And what I'm going to end up doing is putting this in a Ziploc bag and it's going to sit for 48 hours at least. Oh, so you're and not making this, this for no. a long while. Yeah, this is going to sit because all the flavor needs to get in there. I know like buttermilk brines you need for at least 24 hours. Mm -hmm. They say for a sweet tea brine chicken you need 48. And I'm guessing that's because of salt breakdown or something. Is there science involved? Well, I think, I'm not sure if you necessarily need it to be longer for, for sweet tea brines or, or not. I mean, because mm -hmm. mostly what, what's going on with both that and the buttermilk brine is um, there's some some acid in there and there's some salt in there and the salt needs to go into the chicken and then come back out of the chicken basically mm -hmm. so it'll soak the the liquid in from the brine into the juices excellent and then the the acid's going to break down and tenderize the meat a little bit mm. um, so you don't want to do it too long because right. eventually it'll get like that weird um, kind of mushy texture excellent um, which you don't want because that's gross but is there, what's the like, so at least 24 and no more than? I probably wouldn't do it more than 48 more hours. More than 48, so mm -hmm. that's your sweet spot? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could even, I mean, with Brian's too, like, any time is more than, is better than no time. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you only had an hour, it would still taste different than if you just cooked the chicken plain, you know? Right. It wouldn't be quite as delicious, but that's okay. So how are you going to prepare this? You said you're going to fry it? Are you going to fry it up in some oil and cast iron? Uh, yes, I am. I'm going to basically use about three inches of oil off of my deeper dish uh, cast iron skillet yep. mm -hmm. and basically just dredge it right before. And what I'm going to do is after it's set in here, it's going to drain out in a colander or whatever my, uh, you know, drain and not my kitchen drain, but you know, <laughs> it's going to drain out and then I'm going to dredge it in some buttermilk egg and then put that inside of a flour mix and then just fry it up and see how that goes. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds so good. I will take pictures and share this for you guys yeah. on the Facebook page, Southern Kitchen's Facebook page, and uh, we will see how it is. I will bring some in, and if it's terrible, these ladies will certainly tell me. <laughs> well, you'll be next week's Bless Your Heart. I yep. will be. <laughs> I will be. And speaking of Bless Your Heart moments, uh, we actually found out that people are deep frying sweet tea. So seems impossible <laughs> seems like you're pouring tea into oil and how does that actually cook but like many other things like a deep fried snickers deep fried any of those kind of things they're basically making a pastry and inside there's actually some gelatin made sweet tea I don't buy it it's not real sweet tea <laughs> that's what i'm saying i don't buy it's it gross. 
Well, <laughs> it's it's kind of like you know again you're making something thicker that like no one you're drinks. You're about to make fried sweet tea then. Yes. If that's the mm -hmm. bar spoon by which we measure. I mean, really, people are measuring life in all kind of strange ways. <laughs> and the way I look at it is, instead of deep frying your sweet tea, just drink the sweet just drink tea. Just drink Just yeah. drink the sweet tea. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, whoever it is out there in America, and hopefully you're not Southern, but you probably are, <laughs> and you decided to make deep fried sweet tea. It was the Texas State Fair, was it not? Oh, Lord. Uh, it's which, always. Which, you know, the State Fair is just, the State Fair is like the real life internet. Like, the more right. ridiculous the food is, the more it entices people to come back. Everything's fried. Everything, fried butter. Yeah, yeah. Fried sweet tea. Yeah. Like, can I just have a corn dog? Fried health insurance <laughs> providers <laughs> out there. They're out there. Corn dogs are delicious. Out. They are. Corn dogs are the delicious. The original fried yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, fried and on a stick, you're in the fair. There it is, go. but yeah, fried sweet tea, bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, we do actually have one question from Facebook, so wow. we've got um, producer Lindsay standing in for producer Ramona today. What you got, Lindsay? Elizabeth Dawn of Georgia wants to know a little bit more about the purpose of baking soda and sweet tea. Mm, to question, our Elizabeth. science expert. Yeah. So that helps with the cloudiness. Um, if you stir it in there, it'll keep the tea from getting cloudy. And the cloudiness is all from the caffeine for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and is that just for appearances yep. or does it affect taste? It's appearance. You want to really clear because yeah. if you have your nice glass mm -hmm. pitcher like we have and if you you're it. showing it, it needs to look as pretty and sparkly mm -hmm. and you can see straight through even though it's that translucent. But I hear it also affects the taste yep. in the sense that it kind of knocks out a little bit of the, uh, somehow it softens the flavor, right. which you well, taste baking soda, you would think it would zap it up. Well, it, it, it so it's a chemical reaction. Mm -hmm. the, the base or the alkaline nature of the baking soda mixing with the acidic tea will kind of neutralize each other a little bit. Kate, how did we ever like get by without your scientific <laughs> knowledge of baking soda and tea? My like very intro <laughs> chemistry, I'm remembering. I'm like, what did we learn in tenth grade? <laughs> like, and I'd be like, it makes the sweet tea rise. It's baking <laughs> soda, <-y. laughs> it, is, <laughs> it zings. But, but stay tuned to Southern Kitchen for a more in-depth look at what happens with baking soda mm -hmm. and oh, sweet I'm tea. So intrigued. Uh, yes. And we do have a lot more sweet tea content coming, isn't mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. Yeah, summertime, we'll get here eventually. We're in spring right now. It is sweet tea drinking time, you yep. know. There's a lot of sports activities, so, you know, stay tuned. Come to southernkitchen.com and get more of your sweet tea content. If you feel passionate about these issues, you should make sure that you let us know on our Facebook page. And uh, I think that does it for yeah, this week. I think it does? So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, as always, reach out to us at editor at southernkitchen.com. That reaches all Yep, the editors. And also, please subscribe to this podcast, Sunday Supper, at Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Please hit those like buttons so that we know what you like and you can keep up with what we're doing. Until next time, you are... Kate Williams. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ashley twist -Cole. And I am Mike Jordan. And remember, if it's not sweet tea, it's not tea. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Making a declarative statement here. <laughs>